Hey everyone, welcome to Higan Iruthil, and we have here Sheru's uh, build guide. Uh, we're going to be going more in depth with Sheru because there have been a lot of uh, you know back and forth on the comments on her play. But we'll start off first with her stats. Okay, what stats do you need to um, improve her? Um, definitely. Primary stat that you need to improve is going to be HP. I'll tell you in a moment once we go through the other things. So HP, AD, and armor will be good. Plus, magic resistance will be good as well. So armor is going for physical resistance. So more or less, that is her important stats. Next up is going to be her recommended plays. Okay, so far, I am I have a broken set. I don't have a complete set. But we'll go to her uh, recommended place right now to explain further. Okay, for Sheru, same with Icicle. I don't have any three-star recommendations. They are they need four stars. The first four-star is easy to get. Just in case you don't have any available plays, um, Straw Girl is actually a good play to start. Just in case you don't have the other, the rest would be five star. So that is why I'm recommending Straw Girl. So two piece is is uh, magic resistance by ten. If burst damage taken is higher than ten percent of max HP, then the overkill damage taken will be reduced by twenty. This one is a nice one to have while you're preparing for your five star plays. So next, uh, moving on to your five star plays, the first one is going to be. Lady Bai. Okay. Um, for Lady Bai, the increased max HP is actually a must. Um, the, the stat I think that forever is going to be growing for her is going to be HP. I'll explain later in terms of her kit, uh, her skills. For a 3P set, upon entering battle, grants all characters. Robust mid, vigorous mid. So these, this effect can last for 7 seconds and can be triggered every 15 seconds. So this one is um, incoming damages for phys for physical and magic reduced by 10. So which is gives gives her an all, all around build or feel because everybody gets damage resistance. Next up is going to be the one that uh, people are actually talking about Dorothy. OK, let's talk about Dorothy. I'm putting her here because she is actually really the exact um she, she's not she's actually supposed to be paired with with sheru but based on looking at her kit um although it's it's nice it triggers well with her skill but the effect is what i'm you know what i don't want although the two piece set max hp by 15 is good this one the increase and the duration is very small. Okay, so 2.5%. How much is 2.5%? Let's say, for example, um, uh, max HP, for example, is 40K. Okay, so 40K. Let me, let me just bring out my calculator here so that we could have a more a wider uh, discussion on this because people are really insisting on this, which... It's okay, but again, this is not my, you know, my highly recommended play. Uh, I don't really want to get this because this makes her one-dimensional. And um, there are, you have healers on your team. So, again, with, and the healing is not really sufficient. So, 40,000, let's say, for example, uh, multiplied by 0, uh, 0 to 5. Okay, so that's 2.5%. Wait, wait, wait. I think I screwed up my math. So 25%, no. Not 25%, 10,000. So 2.5%. It's really 2.5%. 0 0.025. Okay, so it's only 1,000. So uh, for 40,000 at 2.5%, 40,000 HP. You're only going to be gaining 1,000 for every second for 8 seconds. So that's really roughly 8,000 for 8 seconds. Gaining 1,000 every second can really is not enough to recuperate. It's actually going to be every second. Damage in this game is actually big. 
the 1000 is very very small so one um there was one comment that i read that it's actually um 20 of uh of her max hp every time she does this 20 percent is still what um eight thousand or forty thousand so again it's too small it's too small if the gain was around five percent i'd go all in for this one but 2.5 percent guys it's too small it won't really make a dent on her i'd rather have her get um uh i'd rather have her get the skill that increases her healing but this one the heals are too small i tell you it's going to be too small with the damage that we have with the harder you know harder content that we have this is not enough plus you have healers in the game again you can use this if you want me to use this i don't have a problem with it but again this is not what i'm recommending I'll show you what I'm recommending later. So Dorothy is actually kind of a middle of the pack five star. Um, the other option is also middle of the pack. Uh, also Vita, increase max HP by 15. But this one, when HP is below 35%, instantly heals for 40% of max HP. So if her, it's only going to be 20%. This is going to be 40% instantly. So this might help her survive, even if it's only one time. So again, both of them are middle of the pack. You may use Vita as well. You may try either that, either Dorothy or Vita. Um, but what I'm actually pushing for is this one. Grand Duke Angler. This also increases max HP by 15. This one, after applying crowd control on target... Target takes 15% more damage within 8 seconds, max 15 stacks. If you stack this, this is at 45% already. This actually helps your melee DPS, whoever your DPS is here, to take down bigger targets. This is what I like because this assists a lot of units, especially if she, your team is heavy on the front. This will really, really help them. Okay, 15% more damage. If you have three stars, that's 45% more damage within eight seconds. So after applying crowd control, so if you apply another crowd control, this again takes effect. So that is why I want this because um, let's go back to her kit. Anyway, we're, th those are my recommended plays. Let's, uh, let's go now to her skill priority so that we can discuss more on the skills and why uh what to call this why du grand duke angler is actually the best for her okay so if you take a look at her skills i'm gonna relate first grand duke angler with uh with her passive her passive actually has encroaching cold which is your crowd control okay um this one is attack speed is reduced for 5%. This effect lasts for 12 seconds, max 10 stacks. So again, this is your crowd control. This is applied to an attacker. So this will be comboed with Grand Duke Angler. Um, this, once you level this to level, you know, level 10, this is only at level 6. This is at 38 to 40. Okay, so, but you have a fixed one, fixed increase for that one for encroaching cold here extra 15 percent so once you go back to this one plus a minimum of 38 plus 15 that's roughly what 53 so at 53 that's already more than you know every at least every two attacks sorry at least after uh what do you call this after being hit at least for every two hits, they're going to be taking encroaching cold. The higher you level this up, the more chances that for every attack, the enemy gets encroaching cold. So again, she's really a defender that is going to take advantage of encroaching cold, which is going to, with, with the Grand Duke Angler, gives that unit um, increased, um, th that unit, that the attacker can take at maximum 45 more damage from your your you know your your dps units so it's a it's really a no-brainer plus i think you'll have a healer at the back which really answers your problem 
So I rest my case. At this point, I still, you know, stand by my choice as Grand Duke Angler for the best uh, play for her. So going back, skill priority, of course, it's going to be Frost Blessing. No other. You have to make sure that this is going to, uh, to be at level 10 first because this drives her kit. Number two is going to be her active at three. You can spam this really if you have a lot of energy. This one, she gives a shield to herself and to a target ally. The shield strength is 15 to 16%. But again, as you level this up, this scales up as well and grants uh, the shield unit 30% bonus armor while she holds it. Again, she's a very, very nice support unit. I'm really up for her. Right now, she's my primary... Um, primary guardian i put gildan aside to test her so far i'm actually happy with her kit especially that uh okay here so this one is going to the shield is go, uh the, it's going to be dependent on her max hp that is why her max stat the one that you should, you should focus on is her max hp don't focus on AD. She won't really need it. She is an ice wall. You don't need her to attack much. So all you need is this skill. This one. This one is going to generate a shield. And this is going to generate a bonus armor for another ally that has that shield. Preferably another frontline unit that you have. Okay, for the ultimate one, this is um, this one, the granting of all allies uh, bonus max HP within 12 seconds. This has a small area. Technically, you can fit on two other, you know, melee, melee, melee frontline units there. So at least three of them will, will be receiving this while generating an area that neutralizes all incoming projectiles from the enemy in a circular, which lasts for five seconds. So they're actually immune neutralizes i assume that it's its immunity for incoming projectiles this is for four seconds again this is a nice skill to have but passive and your active are going to be your bread and butter your basic attack you don't even have to level it up as early as now but again those are my um priorities again going back to the active this one is max hp and armor bonus this one if you want to prioritize this so she has bonus damage mitigation with herself. Also, incoming projectiles from the enemy will be deflected to deal physical damage equal to 5% of Shero's max HP to the attacker. So this one, if you da want damage miti um, mitigation for herself alone, then this is also a nice one to have. But I'm going with this because the shield applies to both, to two units. Plus, there is an armor bonus, which is also nice. I think this is better. And you can spam this. This is only three. So, um, I don't think this uh, these two are a contest. First no is going to be used more. So, moving on to Awaken Priorities. So, I got one copy of her after my summon video. So, first one is uh, Physical Damage Mitigation, which is nice. Increase healing received, which is nice as well. Um, this one, phase three. This is the one that I mentioned. Plus 15% in inflicting encroaching cold. This is for her passive. So this, you must get this. Especially if you are, you know, going to uh, make sure that encroaching cold is affected every, you know, for every time an attacker attacks her. So... More than 50% is actually good. The higher, the better. So for every attack, could be a better chance to get encroaching cold. Then this one, phase four. Um, I'm going after after this one. Upon taking a hit, increase self max HP by 4%. Again, I would want her to increase um, um, her max HP again because of the shield that she gives. And also, it scales with her ultimate as well. For phase five... Once attacking unit shield, uh, shielded by first node, the enemy will be frozen. So this is also nice. This is this. Uh, th I will get this definitely because it has synergy with f uh, with first node. This one is going to be deflection. This one synergizes with the other one. And the last one, phase six, 
Max HP increased by Sacred Realm. Now lasts for 24 seconds, which is nice. Uh, again, more HP the better. The area generated by Sacred Realm is now 7 seconds. I'd go for this one. The max HP increase. So, those are my thoughts for Awaken Priority. And who else were with her? Um, supports frontline units well. She doesn't really need to have another um, another uh, hydro unit with her. She can be the lone hydro unit as a wall. Encroaching cold, she can produce herself. So she's not really dependent on other units. She actually complements other units, but she can stand alone. Don't worry. She will be very good with the hydro team. Again, you can splash her with any other team. Um, Frontline. She works well with probably two other frontline units, probably one Hoplite and one, if you have one Assassin there. Um, if you want to go with the Icicle, additional control, you have a DPS in front and probably a healer. If you don't need more heals, you could always slack a, you know, a DPS unit at the back as well. So that is it, guys. Um, kind of long video. I just had to clear... My, up my choice um again you know the reason why people have been asking and uh that is it so again to each each his own um if you feel that um her current um dorothy is actually for her it's really up to you guys i'm just, i'm just giving you guys my opinion um i'm not perfect you might prefer healing over what i was recommending over grand duke angler but again, um, in terms of overall efficiency, I think Grand Duke Angler is overall more efficient than Dorothy. So thank you very much, guys, for staying this far. Take care, stay safe. This is The Warden, and I'm out of here.